In this short video lecture, I'm going to review the main areas we look at in the unit and look at a little in a little bit of detail at topic one. So there are topics in the unit are broken down into three main areas. The first is concepts, terms and design. That's topics one, two and three. And we'll look at the first one briefly in this lecture in a moment. The second main area is testing hypotheses and it's topics four and five, which are testing hypotheses about means or averages. Topic six, which is testing hypotheses about frequencies or proportions. And topic seven, which is testing hypotheses about relationships between two variables. The last area is an introduction to multivariate analysis. And this is topic eight, the last topic in the unit. If we look at the assessment, you'll see that the first area, topics one, two, and three, is assessed in the first two assignments and the exam. The second area is assessed in assignments two and three, which are sets of problems, and also in the exam. And finally, the last main topic area, introduction to multivariate analysis, which is really quite brief, is not assessed. Okay, let's look at the first topic area, which consists of topics one, two, and three. It's an introduction to statistical terms and important concepts and issues related to design. So the first topic one is really about testing models or explanations in biology. The next looks at issues related to the design of studies. And topics one and two are both important for the first assignment, the first assessment task. Topic three looks at some potential problems in design and how to deal with those. And that is also important for that first assignment. Let's move to look at topic one, which has four main areas. So the first subtopic is estimation and model testing. That's where we start at looking at two different approaches two or two different reasons for collecting data. The next is a framework for testing models. Then we get on to look at the role of the statistical test in that process. And finally, we look at how statistical tests can cause us to make errors. And they're referred to as type one and type two errors. When we collect data, we can have two main reasons for doing that. One is estimation. We might simply want to estimate something or measure something about the system. And there's some examples here where we might want to know the average, the rate, or some other characteristic of the system. An other or alternative reason for collecting data is to test a hypothesis, an idea, an explanation. Here we're trying to understand how the system works. For instance, we might want to test the idea that predators limit the number of fish in a particular area, or that plants need certain kinds of nutrients to grow, or that certain kinds of risk factors lead to certain kinds of diseases. Of course, these two approaches are not mutually exclusive. We may do one and then the other, and that is in fact the most common approach, either estimate something and then test hypotheses about it, or work on explanations and then make estimates of the frequency of a disease, how much nutrient is required, and so on. In subtopic two, we look at a framework for testing models, and that's a series of steps which are in the diagram here on the left. We start with our idea, explanation, or model, and then we move through a series of steps in order to test that model. Characteristics of this is that it's a falsificationist approach, which basically means that we're proposing hypotheses and trying to test them. It's a methodical approach, which you can see by the diagram. We work step by step, and that can help us identify problems. It's a repeating process. We never actually end. In some particular study, we might decide we know enough, but the process itself can continue. And if we find out that our idea is incorrect, we reject our explanation, we can come up with a new explanation, a new idea for what's going on. 
if it turns out that our idea is correct, we can go back with new hypotheses to try and refine that idea. That's why it's a cyclical process. And either pathway, we learn something about the system we're studying. Um, finally, this framework makes the role of statistical tests explicit it's right in here. After we've collected our data, either by doing an experiment or an observational study, we do a statistical test to decide whether our idea seems to be correct or it seems to be incorrect. In some cases, the results we collect may be so obvious that that statistical test is not really necessary. In the next subtopic, we look at why we need statistical tests. And the basic reason for that is we can't collect all the data. We're usually just working with a sample. The results we can get may vary from time to time or from one group of people to another group of people. And there may be chance events that occur and affect the results. So we're using statistical tests to determine basically could our results have happened by chance? If they could, then we basically say, well, it doesn't seem to be anything going on here. If our results are unlikely to have occurred by chance, then we've got evidence for some kind of biological process. Predators are important. Certain risk factors in disease are important. The statistical test is a guide in cases where the data are variable and our conclusions are uncertain. The problem with statistical tests is they never tell us exactly the right answer. They give us some information which we use to make a decision. So in the real world, the null might be true or the null hypothesis might be false. And as you work through the readings, you'll get a better idea of what the null hypothesis is. If the null is actually true and we decide that it is true, we've made a correct decision. If we decide it's false, however, we've made an error. We've said that something is going on when in fact it isn't. Statisticians call that a type one error. On the other hand, if the null is false in the real world and we should really reject it, then if we do that and we decide the null is false, again, we've made a correct decision. If the null is false, but we decide that it is true, then we've made what statisticians call a type two error. And the alpha and beta here just refer to the rates at which those errors occur. And in the material readings and the statistical manual, we look a little bit more at what those things actually mean. There's also a exercise using Excel to explore type one and type two errors. Okay, if we recap in the first topic area, we're looking at model testing, we're looking at issues related to design and problems that occur if we don't pay careful attention to the design of the study. In the first topic, we look at a model testing approach, what hypotheses and null hypotheses mean in that model testing approach, what the role of statistical test is, and what the significance level is and how it relates to type one and type two errors. In the next of these short mini lectures, I'll look at topic two.